Greetings, this is Greg. I'm going to make this part two of my Fiat 1.4 multi-air assembly. As you can see, I have the short block. Now, to get oriented, the engine's upside down, okay? This is the crankshaft, and this is the main bearing cradle. And when I say short block, that's really parts terminology. When you buy a rebuilt engine, it usually comes as either a short block or a long block. Short block would be what you see here. Um, engine with the rotating assembly installed, meaning crankshaft, all the bearings, um, rod bearings, main bearings, and so forth, connecting rods, pistons, piston rings, all that stuff. If it was a long block, it would have the head attached. And those are really the way rebuilt engines come, either in a short block form or a long block form. They would very un very rarely come with all of the other external things like manifolding, water pump, etc. So, short block assembly is done, and it went together very, very well. I'm uh, happy with it. There's a few things from the previous video I want to clarify before we move on. First of all, we have 20 main bearing bolts, and they're numbered uh, 1 through 20. These here are 1 through 10, and by the, you may be able to see numbers I wrote on there. That actually has to do with the order for torquing them, not the numbers of the bolts. But in any case, numbers 1 through 10 are the ones you need to inspect and make sure they're not stretched, and they're the ones that you may have to replace and that I do suggest you replace. If you're doing a performance build, a standard build, it doesn't really matter. These bolts, well, provided they look okay, these bolts are going to be fine, and it'd be very unlikely that bolts 11 through 20 would have a problem. Head bolts are just like these bolts. They say to inspect them, and if they look fine, you can reuse them. Uh, for a performance build, I'm recommending replacing them. The rod bolts have to be replaced, period, end of story, no discussion there. Anytime you take apart the motor, it's going to need new connecting rod bolts. Uh, we talked about oil squirters in the last episode. There's one per piston, and it uses the oil squirters to uh, squirt oil onto the bottom of the piston. It helps prevent knock. I did not mention in the last video that those squirters have a check valve in them, and so after you reinstall them, it's a good idea to put compressed air onto the squirter and make sure that they those check valves open up and the oil squirters will in fact squirt. Um, I could just see somebody damaging one of those things, taking it out or putting it in, and then, uh, you know, for some reason it always blows the number three piston or whatever. So just make sure to check those. It just takes a second to do that with compressed air. Uh, another addition from the previous video, I, we talked quite a bit about this windage tray. I think windage trays are really great, but that is Fiat 124 only. The Fiat 500 Abarth, including, as far as I know, the aftermarket, oil pans do not have a windage tray. Now, keep in mind that might be different by the time you're watching this video, but at this time, uh, that's how they are. I'm happy to say all the mains and, and rod bearings plastic aged out right on spec. I'm extremely happy about that. And uh, let me stop the video for a moment while I flip the motor over and show you what's going on on the other side. Okay, so here we are. Um, motor's right side up. As you can see, the pistons are in short blocks assembled. I'm very happy with how this is going. Now in the last video we talked about this sealant. This is, there's no gasket here, it's always sealant. And that sealant, according to the manual, you got to use the official Fiat stuff and it's super expensive and uh, anyhow, I ordered two tubes of that super expensive stuff, 70 something dollars. It got here and it was hard as a rock. There was no way you could squeeze that stuff out of the tube. And the reason is, in very small fine print on those tubes, they said expired in 2015. Uh, the time of this video is 2020. So, the stuff was expired. So what am I going to do? Am I going to order more of it and then find out it's expired and, and delay things another two weeks before I even get started? Uh, no. What I did is I called up the tech support line for JB Weld. And I want to be very clear that I'm not sponsored by them. I don't know anybody there. The uh, only automotive financial connection I have to anybody is that I do tech support and product development and testing for Euro Compulsion. And uh, and I know the owner of Euro Compulsion, Chris, and, and he's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. So anyhow, uh, that disclaimer is out of the way. So I don't know these people, but I've used JB Weld products for a long time, and I know they make gasket cement. I hadn't used it before. So I called them up, and surprise of all surprises, when you call the JB Weld tech line, a human being answers the phone. No phone maze, nothing. And it's a human being that knows a lot about stuff and uh, their products anyway. And they told me that this product specifically will resist oil. It has no compatibility problems with any type of oil, will not harm sensors, 
will handle the temperatures of this engine. So all of the things that are required uh, for a sealant to function in this environment apparently are met by this. I'm highly confident it's going to work fine. So confident, obviously, that I'm betting my not having to take the engine out because if it leaks a ton of oil, I'm going to have to do all this over again. So I'm very confident it's going to work well. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll let you guys know, but I have high hopes. Moving along, um, we talked about the engine displacement before, and someone asked me very correctly that uh, there's somebody correctly pointed out, I should say, I guess a very observant person, that on some form, I think it's the Fiat 124 form, I had mentioned that I was going to make this a 1426 cc motor, 1426 cc's, and now it's uh, 1406 or 1408, something like that. And why did I change my mind? And, and uh, some people had speculated that since it's a Siamese block, there wasn't enough metal in here to make it a 1426, and that's close, but not really correct. Um, the reason that I made it a 1406 cc, is, well, first of all, when you bore out an engine, if you bore it out a little bit, you don't have to worry about this, but as you bore it out more and more, you have to worry about the diameter of the head gasket. And let me just, it's hard to hold the phone and do this. So the head gasket um, cannot bore, any engine, okay? The head gasket cannot overhang the cylinders at all. If they do, it will be a, a disaster. And although we're not bored out that much, I did bore the engine out enough so that the stock head gasket overhung just a little bit. Now, there are two ways to deal with that. Uh, one is to have a custom head gasket made, but that's expensive. And part of the intention here of this build is to put down a roadmap for other people to do similar high-powered Fiat builds without breaking the bank. And, and consequently, that's why I'm not a lot of things I'm not doing. I'm going with stock rods. I'm keeping the stock bolts. You know, we talked about that before. I could up the money in, in, of this build and be a lot more expensive, but bang for the buck would go downhill. And it's the same with the head gasket. Now, to make the stock head gasket work, what I did, and this is acceptable, I took a Dremel bit like this. And of course, you don't do this on the motor because you'd be getting, you know, metal and everything everywhere because this is an all metal head gasket. And it's three different layers. I think we've talked about that. So over at the workbench, I would make the gasket bigger, bring it over, put it on. Uh, you can't just put a hone into the gasket because, uh, this is strange, although the cylinders are round, the whole, the head gasket is not round. It has little cutouts. Um, and um, thus, you really have to do this by hand. There's no other way. So and the metal's extremely tough. So, you know, three hours with a Dremel tool, Dremel it and then clean it off so that I don't get metal shavings on the engine, go test fit it on the engine, and uh, do that for every cylinder. And now I have a stock head gasket that fits perfectly. Now, if I went to 1426 cc's, it would take a lot longer to make this gasket. And whenever you're doing something by hand, there's a certain amount of slop or error that you're going to have. And the gasket's already getting pretty thin here. And while I could make it a 1426, not a problem, my work by hand would be such that I wouldn't trust it and I would have to go with a custom made head gasket and that drives the cost of the project up a lot. So uh, 1406, 1408 CC is, is what it's gonna be and, and uh, that's that. So let me put the phone down. I'm actually gonna put the head on and then uh, we'll continue with the the remainder of the video. Okay, I'm back. Now the long block is assembled, meaning I put the head on. Uh, not too much to see here, although I, as I said many times, I'm very excited about this head. It is ported, um, and it flow checks better than, than the stock one by a considerable margin. And this is really the only power adder we're doing. The pistons don't add any power. In fact, they're, even with the slight displacement increase, it's a net loss because of the compression. But we're going to make that up with a bunch more boost, and that boost will have an easier time getting in and out uh, through these ports. Excited about that. Uh, there are 10 head bolts. Let me show you the procedure really quick here for uh, for torquing down the head. It's not quite as as simple as uh, as it used to be in the old days. So starting off, it says to install the tensioner thing there and the thermostat housing. You know, I, I didn't do any of that. Anytime you're going to not do what the instructions tell you, 
it's important to understand why the instructions are telling you to do it. And why would they want you to install the thermostat housing and uh, the tensioner dowel before you put the head on? Well, because the instructions assume you're doing this with the engine in the car. I'm not doing that, so not a factor for me. Uh, here's a nice picture showing you how to inspect the head bolts to see if they need to be replaced. I know I'm beating this to death, but if you're doing a performance engine, meaning anything going above normal tuning levels, say 25 pounds of boost, uh, or plus or minus eight or plus eight degrees of timing, let's say if you're going a little bit less boost, definitely, definitely uh, replace those bolts. So then to the actual procedure, they number the bolts one through 10. I actually suggest you write the numbers next to the bolts so that you, uh, once you get going, you, you don't need to keep referring back to the paper. It can get confusing. You can easily forget which bolt you did. Um, and that saves you from doing that. Then from there, uh, oh, actually, you know, that, that's the wrong page. That's something else. Here we go. Okay. One through 10. So that clarifies that. And then this is the procedure. You torque them all to 15 meters, or correction, 15 foot pounds, uh, then to 22 foot pounds. If you want to use metric, go ahead. Then you turn them all 90 degrees. And again, going in that same order. And then again, another 90 degrees. A couple things to note here. It says, do not use a torque wrench for that step, the 90 degree step. Um, that's because the torque wrenches have a lot of flex in them and you won't get a true 90 degrees. However, uh, there are now torque wrenches which have a degree setting. So in other words, you set them for foot pounds, newton meters, whatever you're doing, inch pounds maybe. And uh, then you can change the setting to degrees. And, and uh, I don't have one of those, so I had to do this the old fashioned way. But in any case, head is all bolted on. Um, all of this stuff is stock. The valve springs are good to at least 7,500 RPM, probably closer to 8,000. So I'm very comfy with the stock valve springs. Now, if you went to bigger valves, you know, they'd be heavier. That would change that a little bit. Uh, stock retainers and keepers. You could go to titanium retainers, but the retainers are so darn small, I just didn't feel that I'd gain anything uh, meaningful doing that. So all of this valve train stuff is stock, which means it'll be OEM reliable and work really well. Uh, the only real changes are porting, and most of the porting is uh, down near the valve seat. Oh, and the seat angles are different too. So uh, I'm excited about getting this thing going, and tomorrow I will put everything else on the motor, um, all the external stuff, and then hopefully I'll be able to put the motor in. I usually need a helper to do that. I can do it by myself. Um, with the plague going on, that's kind of a problem. In fact, I think I'm going to make a plague video. I just flew in here from another country, and so now nobody wants to work with, with me in the shop. Anyhow, um, I'm going to sign off and uh, get this video uploaded to YouTube. I hope everybody's having a great day. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.